Hi, I'm Professor Lynn Ritchie, and in this video, we are going to explore the diversity of values in the United States. We have already discovered that our values are linked to our emotions. Our values are goals that motivate our actions. Values are applied across multiple situations. Our values are tied to our standards. Values are ranked by importance and our value structure guides our actions. Many people wonder where our values originate. We learn from others during our socialization what is appropriate and inappropriate behavior, our norms and roles. We also learn the rationalization for our behavior, our values, and our values are passed from generation to generation, and they are influenced by our cultural ideologies. In the United States, we had multiple ethnic groups or immigrant groups who settled in particular areas of the United States. To understand the diversity of values in the United States, we need to take a look at the value structures of these immigrant groups and how that guided their actions and how it continues to guide our actions today. Colin Woodard, in his book, American Nations, a History of the Eleven Rival Regional Cultures of North America provides us information on the cultural structures of various immigrant groups. And he identifies the core values of these regional cultures. He grouped these regional cultures into 11 American nations. Let's go ahead and explore each nation. The first nation is the Deep South. The Deep South was settled by English slave owners from Barbados. The states in the Deep South include Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Florida, Georgia, Texas, and South Carolina. The core values here are related to those associated with the West Indies Slave Society. Democracy was seen as a privilege of a few. It had limited federal powers, limited taxes on the wealthy, and limited regulations on the environment, labor, and consumers. The next nation is El Norte. This was settled by Spanish Americans. The states include Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, and California. The core values are independence, self-sufficiency, adaptability, a strong work ethic, and democratic reforms. The next nation is Greater Appalachia. This was settled by immigrant groups from Northern Ireland, Northern England, and the Scottish Lowlands. The states involved here include Kentucky, Tennessee, West Virginia, Arkansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Indiana, and Illinois. The core values here are associated with a warrior ethic, personal sovereignty, and individual liberty. The next nation is Tidewater. This was settled by English gentry. The states include Maryland, Virginia, and North Carolina. The core values are associated with those of a semi-feudal society. They first had indentured servants and then they moved to slavery. There is a respect for authority and tradition. 
there's little emphasis on equality and little participation in politics. The next nation is the Midlands, and this was settled by English Quakers and Germans. The state includes New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, and Nebraska. Their core values, they see society as being organized to benefit the people. There is no top-down government intervention, and it's pluralistic, centered on the middle class. The next nation is New Netherlands. This was settled by Dutch immigrants. The states include New York and New Jersey, and the core values include being materialistic, uh, belief in commerce, freedom of inquiry, and acceptance of diversity, both ethnic and religious. The next nation that was identified by Woodard was Yankeedom. The immigrant groups included radical Calvinist or Puritans and the English. The states include Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Vermont, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, North and South Dakota, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. Core values here include education and intellectual achievement, participation in politics and government. There's a communal empowerment and a concern for communal well being. The next nation is the left coast. The immigrant groups here were New Englanders. They were merchants and missionaries, as well as Appalachian Midwesterners. The, the states include coastal California, Oregon, and Washington. The core values are a hybrid of Yankeedom, utopianism, and the Appalachian self-expression and self-exploration. The next nation is the Far West. The immigrant groups here were based on corporate settlements from the railroads, mining, irrigation, and dams. The states include Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Washington, Oregon, North and South Dakota, Colorado, Nevada, Nebraska, Kansas, Arizona, New Mexico, and California. Core values here are independence, antitrust of corporations, and little government involvement. The next nation is New France. The immigrant group here are Northern France peasantry. The states include Louisiana, specifically New Orleans, and Southeast Canada. The core values here are egalitarianism, consensus-driven, liberal, government involvement in the economy, and multiculturalism. And the last nation identified by Woodard was First Nation. And First Nation is the combined combination of all of the Native American tribes that are located in North America. There are 574 federally recognized tribes they're distributed over 36 states in the USA, and 229 
are located in Alaska. The core values here is self-governance, honesty and integrity, generosity and sharing, cooperation, hard work, community and family, wisdom, egalitarian, and they have a collectivist orientation. When we can identify the core values, it becomes easier for us to understand our differences in our approach to completing societal tasks. Like the United States, other countries might have regional variations based on a dominant ethnic group. And it would be worthwhile if you are planning to travel to another country to see if there aren't these regional variations and cultural patterns. Okay, next up we're going to take a look at diversity in the workplace and some of the ideas of Gert Hofstadt. Okay, I'll see you soon.